upgrading Navisa security inside a 2013, 15, 16 to the latest version of NAV is uh, requiring also importing the objects that match the executable. So I will be starting here with a 2015 database already upgraded using 2017 executable. So I will need to import the latest objects. We have some integrated data upgrades that you'll be running. And then uh, we will, of course, need to scan the current source code uh, matching uh, the current version of NAV in here. We will also import the latest data. We have um, improved uh, segregation of duty permission sets. Uh, we have additional groups for quick security and other things in here. In this example, uh, I will uh, also be running the change uh, to code because we have added a few improved features for the field level and data security in here. I have an NNV database with uh, an earlier version of EC security in here. It's now running on 2017, so it has been upgraded uh, to the latest version of NAV in here. Code is still the same in here, but it didn't um, matter for the NAV application. See some of the naming here is uh, different in here. So the first thing I have done is downloaded the latest version and you can find them on our website. And this one is uh, uh, current latest version in here. Inside this folder is for each executable version of NAV. It's not the application, but it's executable. I will uh, have the code in here and uh, in this case, I have uh, all the objects for 2017 in here. So I will open up my development environment. And I have my uh, 2015 database in here. So I will go and import uh, the objects in here. There's uh, two files in here. Uh, since I already have it installed, you should never import the ESACC uh, in here because that's objects that will be modified by the field level security install. I will have to import the application in here. And the one thing to be aware of is that we have one object that potentially can be uh, imported with a different number. In my case, I can see that my current object is uh, using 4032 and it's uh, a newer version in here being imported of that menu suite. But that will be the only potential objects with a conflict. But I'll import this and I will go ahead and synchronize the tables also in here. So the new version have uh, several new objects in here, uh, but I also replaced all the existing EC security objects in here. If I go reselect uh, my server, and I go to my EC security menu down here, I'll see it's now called permission set, and that is one of the changes to terminology also that happens in here. Several other things have also happened uh, in this version in here. The first step after any upgrade is actually to go to the security setup. And under uh, actions advanced, there is a function in here, update data. There are several things like quick security is empty and things like that one in here. Also see some of the object level security is not having the data you normally have been seeing in here. But this function update data will actually go through a couple of steps. It creates default quick security information. It updates my quick security permission sets and go through several uh, other steps in here. So it will ask you a few questions also. And after it finished, it will now have updated the data as I expected in here. 
if I look uh, under my object properties, quick security and everything has been initialized in here. If I actually go run this function again in here, since I under yes and activated all the features, it won't really do anything. Data is now up to date. This one, even when doing a short uh, version uh, upgrade, you have to just go do this one and it will go through the steps that is for that specific version you came from to the one you now is implementing. The same function uh, is actually being used for uh, the field level and data security. There is also a function in here to update data. There's really nothing that has done in the last two years that require a conversion of data in here. But this one handled the part about upgrading all the data in here uh, that is currently in here. There's a lot of new things in here. If I look at the permission sets, for example, and the one that uh, is shipped by uh, MergeTool.com in here, you see that I'm currently using quite an old version of these recordings in here. This one works until 2015 in here. We actually want to go ahead and import the latest one in here to upgrade these permission sets. Normally you'd be using an import and import and override, but there is a special uh, function here about importing and add new recordings. That means all the things that are new in the existing permission sets. So instead of from that one, I will go in and find my SOD permission sets for version 4.8 down here. And I can go now import this one. If there's new things added, like a new recording, it will be added to the existing permission set. If there's new role builder permission, they will be added. Existing one won't be overridden, so all your normal changes you have done yourself will still be in here. The other thing, if there's a whole new permission set, then you basically uh, will get that whole permission set added in here also at this point. So again, if a new version is released, you can always use this one. And as you will see when I'm done, I will have now three recordings uh, for most of these permission sets delivered with Easy Security in here. So if I now look at it, um, I have uh, more permission sets in here or more recordings. We had an old fixed version also, so I end up actually getting four in here. These uh, fixed recordings have no permissions, but are an easy way to actually adjust and add something uh, either on the whole sales area, purchase, finance, inventory, or row centers in here. We also added uh, a couple of new permission sets in here. Um, one of them, for example, is uh, these ones about running all pages, all queries, and things like that one in here. You can actually use the function in here in the comments. You should be able to see that this one was actually inserted uh, today uh, and modified and so on in here in the comments. This one finish the part about getting the new permission sets. There's also new permission groups. I had some already uh, as demo data. Uh, we have with Quick Security, we now shipping some permission groups that are useful also, not so much as uh, examples, but really to be used in here. So I'm going to import those ones also. So I got these three new permission groups down here. There's another new feature uh, with the latest version, and that's something called summary calculations. We have some data also for that. So the same way, again, I'll go import the data that we deliver for summary calculations in here. So this one now um, added the summary calculation that looks across multiple uh, table data or objects to actually find if a user can actually do a task in the system in here. Next step is to update the source code analysis. And since I'm using the same version of the code in here, I'll actually go select uh, my 
2015 uh, code in here. And I will rescan that one in here. We can also, of course, have rescanned the actual code in the customer's database. So you should have exported the current code and then have selected that file in here. But I'm going to do uh, the 2017 one for all the objects in here. And I'll get the relations from source code. This one will run uh, for a little while because there's quite a lot of code that is being uh, read through in here. So the code has now been uh, scanned uh, and I have all the relations matching the current code in here. Last part to do for the login and permissions part is actually to publish permission because it's going to push all the new things out in the normal NAV security tables. And of course when I do that there's new objects from upgrading uh, the easy security objects. So I actually have to pull them in of course. Then I can do the publish after that. I will push it out in the normal NAV security tables. It was uh, 24 new um, objects that was imported with the latest version of EC security. So the new data has been pulled in. Now we'll go ahead and run the publish and push the new data out here. And Quick Security is uh, implementing quite a lot of permissions, so you'll see a progress bar at the end. It will take a little time to go through the writing of the new data into the NAV security tables. The last changes are now written, and after this one, I have finished the login and permissions part. So all the new permission sets um, or details about permissions that has been written. For field level and data security, since I updated the source code analysis, I could go select the file and run it again, but there's an ability just to use the same data one more time in here. So I will now pull in the new match of uh, pages against tables in here. With an update going from older versions, older meaning two years uh, or more, you would uh, like to delete the changes. If you had actually updated the normal NAV code, you probably now would have a database anyway without any field level security changes. But I want to go through the delete and um, remove or delete and implement code. So the first thing I want to do in here is mark my objects in the designer. need for this part uh, a partner license. I also want to export uh, into the FOG format so if something goes wrong I have a way to reverse. And it's always a good idea uh, to compile the object simply to know that nothing was wrong before I actually started in here. So then I can go back to my easy security in here, select the delete changes text file, and run the function to delete changes in code. This one will, since the code changes exist in here, remove them all and it will create a new text file with the code changes being removed in here. So I can see 100 pages has some code removed in here. So I'll go import this. And that is my delete changes out in here. Typically, if the code was also upgraded in the database, I would have done this step before I even tried to run any merge tools or things like that one, because Removing all these changes uh, would make uh, a lot less uh, to be done in here. So, but if I look at the one that are not compiled, I'll see um, the one I had some objects that didn't compile from my 2015 upgrade in here. 
but it also all the one with today's date are the one for easy security in here. Those ones are not related to this one, there was other changes. So now I've removed all the code. I want to mark the objects one more time. And it's now DBM table number three. And in this case, um, I should still do the FOB file and the other thing, but since I know it worked before, there shouldn't really be any need uh, for doing it one more time. So I'll go implement changes in code. And you will now write the code with the latest engine in here. One of the things that has changed is how we will handle journal lines. They used to always have the code at the end. Now we're actually handling one issue about an exit in the unopened page code. And a few things will also have data security, even if there was no action. So I could see I had 100 pages before. Now I have all 101 modified. So last part, of course, is to go uh, have the import of the install out. Filter on today's date, and I can see the code units and all the pages in here. And I need to compile those, and I have also upgraded the field level and data security functionality to the latest level of the code in here. The last part, as you've seen, require import and export in text, and typically something your NAV partner will help uh, install this. So the upgrade from a 2013 or later version to the latest version of Easy Security, also including NME, require the import running the data upgrades that are built into the product, scanning the current source code, then import the data we deliver, and uh, run the delete changes in code. There is a function also to upgrade minimum login permission, and you can find that on the permission sets, and it will insert what is necessary for the latest executable version of NAV also.